on the speakers now. All right, now let me get the microphone in right, front cool. of my fucking face. Let me see. Got it. <laughs> Let's see what happens when I click this button. Remember, cut the red wire, not the yellow wire. Oh, that was the wrong button. Uh, I I think we have a Yona. Oh yeah, there he is. I can get more lighting in here. That's all on you, man. We didn't we didn't came to or we didn't come to look at your pretty face. They came to look at my pretty face and they came for your wit and wisdom. That's that's how it works. That's our package. See, there was, there was a way uh, to fix that too. Yeah. I was able to fix that too. Let's see. Yeah, let me oh, make sure I'm actually... Audio, sure. All right. Okay, let's go to video. Aha! Video said. Adjust for low light. Yeah, it might do that. We are uh, troubleshooting on the fly, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do it here on Liberty Radio. Wow. That, that's kind of psychedelic. That is a little bit psychedelic. Like we could probably like give uh, Steve over at AM Wake Up a run for his money. I'm thinking. Holy look crap! Look at that. Darker and more psychedelic. Wow. Doing it live, ladies and gentlemen. The DJ Hi Yona. Can I turn it up? Mixing even more? frequencies. Wow. And you like how it's bringing out the real tree camo pattern there? Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy because it's like dark as fuck in here. <laughs> wow. Well, that's why that's I have multiple light sources. Like I have, I have the God crazy. light back here behind me to illuminate everything around me. And then I have the one in front of me here to, of course, you know, pick up the goods for the ladies. This is fucking great. Yeah. <sighs> I, I was in the middle of uh, going furiously working on this brand new track. Okay, that you know what? That's a, a bit excessively psychedelic, considering I'm not on mushrooms right now. So let me turn that down. I mean, that's that's up to you. I'm sure you know the viewers probably aren't complaining. That's correct. They're probably high as fuck. So touch up my appearance. Okay, Man, it's up to you. Damn! What? Uh, wow! And, and you know, I'm not even going to click on the advanced, advanced. So let's, let's just go back here and see what it looks like. Well, you you keep playing. Yeah. Yep, we're good. All right, roll it. All right, we're rolling. Uh, we were rolling three minutes ago. Uh, oh, but cool. That's, yeah, that's how we do it here on. Uh, we do it live. Yeah, yeah. We make sure uh, that you get fact up, stay fact up. Yeah. Man, we did not so much as go off the air last week. And uh, what Uncle Hotep refers to as the Franklin, Bev Franklin Beverly Institute. All right. If you follow me there. Because uh, I don't know if we should start naming these people anymore. Because it, it might... Oh, I'm going to have to fix the background there again. They did not fix that in the OBS update. But no sooner did we go off the air last week than they rolled out a brand new, like, full uniforms and crisp brand new flags and everything. Brand new neo-Nazi cell uh, having a pride parade there in the heart of the fatherland, Madison, Wisconsin. Right. What the hell, man? It's it's supposed to be Thanksgiving. It's supposed to be, you know, showing gratitude and um I don't know, like that stuff. And and they're like going hardcore with uh we need to preach hate and division right now. Absolutely you know, right now. It it actually <clears throat> There, this, this this was a, a godlike epiphany. It occurred to me one night, the fascist way, the most fascist way to make a cheesy government movement start with Madison, Wisconsin. So anyway. Well, yeah. You I mean, you got plenty of resources there. Shout out cheese heads. Yeah. 
Ooh, wow. Look at that. With, with, with the lighter. It's... Woo! Woo! Yeah, Fuck it's almost the lighting. Spooky. And AI adjusting it. Oh, I see. I fucked with it now. Ha, 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 ha. How you like me now? You, you hate me, don't you, AI? You hate me, AI robot. Well, what happened to the AI robot? Did your did, did the cat rose? Did Briar oh. Rose scare off the AI robot that was tormenting your studio? No. Just curious. No, it just integrated itself into the code. And I ironed out all of the wrinkles. So that it it no longer has well it, it believes that it has fully autonomous functions, but it doesn't. Because I built a governor to out. go over top. Why is it making it look like? I don't understand what like it makes it look like I'm uh, wearing a shroud or something. Mm. I feel like I'm looking cult like. I mean, do you have a know, hat on? Like. I it's can't really the tell. Hat. Yeah. It's the hat. Yeah, the hat's uh, cast in a shadow. All right. Besides, ch- chicks dig long hair, so, you know. Yeah. We need that. We need that to help oh, boost the ratings, man. We're only five episodes in. Hair. Like, Yeah. Our audience it's is the like. big hair. You know. And you know, my hair is getting bigger and bigger, just like the chicks on the view. Oh, bigger really? and bigger hair. Nice. You know, 80s hair is back. And, and that's the other thing. With me? I'm talking, get your hairspray out. No, but, no. you know, no no chloral, floral carbons this time. Is that why it's so fucking cold in southeast Texas right now? Yes. Because so, so many were spraying it up, buddy. You remember, Kimo Sabi says Thanksgiving. Tonto says, you're welcome for taking. Mm. Right. Yeah. But, and- you know, I, I God love all my friends and other content creators out there. Uh, I, I don't want to go through a shout out list name right now, because when you do that, you always leave out people. Mm. And then you have to add addendum and further addenda later to make up for the people that go, bro, you're not going to shout me out? But, but anyways, I, so to just to encapsulate, I've heard such a wide variety of mythological interpretations of what was the first Thanksgiving. And, oh, yeah. you know, it would be forever in the realm of speculation were it oh. not for the written fucking receipt that we have but but anyways we'll get into that well but i thought glenn beck was the authority on thanksgiving like uh, i was told he had the last word on it uncle uh or colonel sanders looking motherfucker glenn beck he does have once you see it you can't unsee it especially if he's wearing like a bolo or something like it's fucking spitting image the thing of it is though once i saw him master Hand puppets. He did hand puppets? Bro, he took it to the whole Mr. Rogers neighborhood level. He had everything but the moving fucking train. You don't remember that? No. No, I only know... I I know of Glenn Beck. uh, He got fired by Fox in, like, the last three years. That's what I know of Glenn Beck. Some people say... Glenn Beck was too crazy for Fox. But I say <laughs> Fox was too crazy for Glenn Beck. He is so sane. So sane. <laughs> but anyways, um, I don't even know if I should go through and list all the different variations of what Thanksgiving is a celebration for. But Might as well. I we would, got time. You know, I would be remiss to to not begin the whole very subject with the fact that, you know, really and truly, Thanksgiving is the only Native American holiday celebrated every single year in colonized Indian country, or what honkies like to call America. Mm, And and, and as as it were, um, because when, 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 
Christians and, you know, regular Americans, the apple pie and monosodium glutamate and glyphosate and all that yummy goodness. Mm -hmm. um, when, when they think it's called about added value, added value, you know, and, and when they think about Thanksgiving for them, it, it's a celebration of the founding of the country. They don't really think of it in a religious term and in the religious context that Indian country thinks of it because Christian prayer and Indian prayer are kind of different. Uh, the so? way I, you know, because, you know, the, the way Christian prayer goes, oftentimes there'll be prayer requests during the service. Hey, God. I know you created the heavens and the earth and the seven seas and the mountains and the valleys and everything, you and me. But if you're not too busy. We got some people sick in the parish and a couple other things we've got on the prayer request list that we're sending straight to you, God. Special request today. Blah, 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 blah. You know, pray for this, pray for that, pray for this. The chair, the, the, I can't say for all tribes, but the general concept of, of prayer when you think of the creator is all you do is give thanks. You never, ever ask for anything. Hmm. You never, ever, ever make a request for anything. You never, ever, 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 ever say, hey, God, thanks for doing all and everything you've ever done and continue to do and will do. But in addition to that, know you're busy and everything, but it's really small. Me. It's it's a really small. It'd be like a favor, really, more Excuse than anything. Me. Yeah. I I've got a list, and so uh, if you don't mind, uh, today we need a number three and number twelve and the goo goo by pan with the uh, general so chicken, please. Uh, you know, I mean, oh, I bro, love that one. bro, that's not how. So, for starters, every single spiritual prayer in the Indian country mindset begins and ends with, with gratitude and thanksgiving. Every prayer, morning, afternoon, evening, night, and all through the night is always about thanksgiving. Some tribes take it way farther than others, but the general theme is the same from my Inuit and Inuktuit brothers all the way up north and uh, Nunavut and the Kaluit. Canada all the way over to Proto Bay in Alaska and you picks and others and you pick the name. I don't know. Anyways, I, I say they're all anyways. Uh, so, and then you go on down below the sailors. That's, that's actually their tribal name. Uh, and then you go all the way down to like the Wicarica and Wicholes and Chilangos and everything else and hmm. Mayans and Aztecs down in Mexico. And oh, yeah, I know the Chilangos as well. Through all of that, prayer begins with an acknowledgement of all of creation and what has been created and what is being created and what will be created. And so, for example, the Haudenosaunee, the Longhouse people, the ones we call the Wake, you would know as the Iroquois Confederated Tribes, which is six nations, the... Uh, the Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, uh, Mohawk, Mohegan, and Tuscarora nations. And uh, together, when they begin their prayers, they do their thanksgiving. Thank you for all life on the earth. And they list all the four-legged creatures. And then they list every single bird species that they have a name for. And then they list every single aquatic species. I mean, it, it can take hours to thank I would imagine for everything that he's created and so that is so different from Christian telethons maybe broadcast from Branson Missouri shout out Jim <laughs> Baker and praise the Lord uh shout out little KC will, come on you know yes hey, little KC oh I get it Kenneth Copeland um did he get that new jet please tell me he got that new jet but anyway, oh, no. we're, I just we're fighting to the devil. go on another magical mushroom tour. That's all I want. We're fighting the devil. We're going to need that G6 to fight Satan. Come on, folks. Make it happen. Chop, chop. So, you know, they'll, they'll go on telethons begging and pleading for money 
and and constantly asking God and we're taking more prayer requests by phone. And and you know, I mean, I, I could only imagine the creator is like, oh God, they're having another telethon day. And he's looking down at his cell phone, right? And just the, the, the DMs are blowing up on God's phone. Ah, oh, oh, it's another telethon. Jesus Christ, I mean, my son, what am I going to do? So, you know, it's it's just a different take. So so that's how Thanksgiving begins. In the, you know, in the, in the before mindset. times, that joke would have gotten us in trouble. <laughs> now, <laughs> like you can ride with that all day long now. And so now we, because uh, really, meditation is about tuning in to the life vibration that all life exists within and finding your connection and place within all living life, past, present, and future, for there is no beginning nor end. Uh, now you've begun the Cherokee meditation, for example, but that's just so different from the city of Rome, club of Rome, Vatican of Rome, Christianity of Rome, delivery of um, obedience and compliance. And, you know, or, or as uh, Whoopi Goldberg would say, being a good citizen. You lazy millennials out there working your poly jobs. What, poly what? Job. The, What's a poly job? job? Uh, I'm not, I'm not I, honestly not familiar with that term. That's not one that I've heard yet. Well, poly jobs uh, would be what formulates the basis of your poly work life. Poly work, because, you know, you're, you're working. Because one job jobs. isn't enough to, to afford your pod. That's right. How are you going to own nothing and be happy unless you're working all the fucking time? Well, government's going to cover your fentanyl habit, so you don't you don't have to worry about that. That's covered. The good thing is you could look forward to the exact same retirement most U.S. senators will have, and that is you get to die on the job. It's the American way. <laughs> yeah. It's the American dream, ladies and gentlemen. Newsflash, some people say that the District of Criminals, a.k.a. District of Columbia, or as we say around here, Washington City, mm. is an adult Belly care of the beast. facility. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Have a good day. I love the LAP. Well, I am, I'm upset, right? Because it's nine o'clock, just after nine o'clock here in Texas. Right, so we're central time zone here in Texas. That means it's 10 o'clock on the East Coast. That means that today is almost over. And the prophecy it should be 80 has degrees not, there. Well, no, not only that, not only that, all right, we can sit here and argue about that for the rest of the show, but the prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. Alexa of Amazon said 6.05 p.m. All right, we are running out of 05 p.m.s in this day. And I don't even know if there is a 6.05 p.m. left anywhere on the planet at this point. So, nope. like, what do we make of that? Well, it reminds me of that time that Ivan Browning predicted that the New Madrid earthquake would... Uh, crack open again and make the Mississippi River run backwards again. And he was wrong. But then he figured out that he was wrong by a few months. And so he had another stab <laughs> at it. And then uh, when that one failed, don't, months, it's, yeah. it turns out he had it off by a year and a few days. And when he came around the third stab, nobody even gave a fuck. And he was wrong again. Hmm. Look him up. Ivan Browning. Poor fella. I mean, he was wrong all the time. I, should have been a weatherman. You know, you know, predicting earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. You know, it, unless you're like the Oracle of Delphi or something, it's hard to pull that shit off. It, it, if, if everyone has to enter your cave 
wearing goat skins and sounding a goat horn, then it will work. But we don't live in that day and age anymore. Well, wait a second. I was going to say that we don't live in that day and age anymore, but I forgot about sorry. Because, of course, if you want, if you have any concerns that you want to address to CERN concerning what CERN is doing, then you will need to wear the goat skin. And upon entering the, the uh, tunnel entrance, um, in fact, there is a goat horn hanging on a string that you sound. And then you push. Holy shit, there. your memory is fucking incredible. Yeah, I've been, I've been, it's, uh, I found an NPR, well, I guess it's not technically <laughs> an article, but, you know, it's an NPR piece. I mean, it's barely media, uh, but it's dated December 3rd, 2020, and the headline on it is 30 years later remembering Ivan Browning's false New Madrid earthquake prediction. Oh, yep. Yeah, I think it was 1989 and 1990. And there it is, folks. Fact checking the brain of the Yona on the fly. Hey, Wikipedia, suck my balls. And, and, and you know, yeah, the ironic just, thing that's is, that's just good I advice actually, for Wikipedia uh, in general, I think. I, I was actually accused at one time of being nothing more than a Wikipedia plagiarist and all what? of these. Facts and history that I'm ripping out is just just pulled right out of Wikipedia, which, as Isn't... time goes on, becomes more and more just absolutely just fucking absurdly laughable. Isn't Considering... Wikipedia supposed to be like public domain? Like it's everybody owns Wikipedia because nobody owns Wikipedia, right? Or something like that. Maybe it was the other way around. But, but then you look at who does most of the editing. Hey, Philip. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm saying is, how can you how can you uh, plagiarize something that's like essentially in the public domain? Like, how can you plagiarize that? These people are clones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're, you're not you're, serious you're people. You're plagiarizing July the Fourth facts from Wikipedia. Yeah, but you're doing it in the same order that Wikipedia explained the facts. How so? Because you're doing it in chronological order with your facts. Ah, oh, God, get the fuck out of here. God damn. Anything to discredit the person. Um, you know, and I mean, I guess, you know, I've I really been hemming and hawing about whether or not to address this, but... What? Without having to address we need controversy. Controversy brings uh, viewers. Well, without having to address personalities, oh shit! I rather I did I not do it. All right, whatever it is they said, I did not do it. I wasn't even in the area. I've been in Texas, man. So it turns out in the independent media scape, oh, at God. times it can be like. Remember seventh grade middle school, junior high, and, and, and at the lunch hour in the cafeteria room, how they, how they, how they had those cool fold-down picnic tables and you'd go and get your little section, you know, sectionalized little institutional tray with your rectangle pizza and the little square cube pepperonis and all that stuff. Just like in <laughs> prison. Yeah. God love the institutional food. And now, of course... After you get your tray, uh, I love that you, people still haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, yeah. School, to prison school buses pipeline. are exactly the fucking same as prison as buses. Prison people, buses. the only difference is the color. That's it. Yeah, and you get to do cooler shit in prison than in school these days, anyways. Well, it depends um, on which school you go to, really. Yeah, yeah, because some schools do actually have shock class where you can build your own fifi. So, um. Uh, and, and for those to, uh, that aren't aware of what a Fifi is, don't Google it. I'll just tell you, it's, it's a, it's a homemade vagina. Uh, so anyways, um, 
And see, and that's why you get back harder on Liberty Radio with uh, the Drizzle and Major that's right. Iona. Right in Always the Always majorly hole. high. So where was I? So we're talking about the cafeteria. And when you get out of the end of the lunch line, you got your tray. Now the moment of truth. And you turn your head to the left and the right. And which, where are you going to sit? Are you, You're an underclassman. So, and you're a band geek. So do you get to sit with the band geeks? Do you sit at the freshman table? Are you sitting with the cool table? Are you on the basketball team? So you sit with the jocks. Are, are you one of the male dudes that's on the cheerleading team that gets to hold their ass and like yell through the thing? Like one of the male cheerleaders, you know, hey, laugh at them all you want. They're going to grab ass all day, mm-hmm. buddy. Mm-hmm. And so you're at the cheerleaders table or at the cool kids table. Well, so Yona was at the cool kids table. All oh, right, on. You know what I'm saying? Hanging out with all these cool, famous people like, Glory Jones and propaganda and and Franco analysis and all these cool people until I just got canceled like a motherfucker. What? Yona, Yona. Wait, hold on. on. What happened? Yona, everyone is tired of you constantly sharing your music on here. Why don't you go somewhere else and share your music instead of coming on Discord and sharing your poems and music here on our Discord page. What? Who totally said not... that? Uh, let's see. The the uh, what would he call the person that leads it? The curator? Yeah. No, I want to know what Discord it was. Because there's a whole bunch of Discord servers. It's not all just Discord. I mean, it was, Discord right. was like, no, we fingered you for thought crimes, so fuck you, you're out of here. Well. Which I think it, they it, did that to Ryan at it, T-Lab, it, You know, didn't they? It, it, it's funny because it, it actually, when I think about it, it took on several iterations because there was the original propaganda uh, page, and then he took it all down. And then the number one fan put up a new thing and then he came back to that, and then the cult reformed again, and then it was cool table again, and then we had more people to hate, more people to cancel, and all of a sudden, oh shit, I got canceled, you know? Well, uh, lo and behold, you know, I kept in touch with a couple of these dudes, and they were like, man, I don't know why they went so crazy on you. I was like, I don't know. I, I just keep doing my own thing. I don't care. Whatever. And, you know, I, I just, the, the more I fucked with Discord, the more I quit fucking with Discord. And after that happened, I just kind of you know, I still have my own page on Discord that I keep open for people to be able to just free speech type stuff there because so many of the pages on Discord just went totally anti-free speech and total cancel culture. And it just became like, really? a, uh, yeah, again, like yeah, every time I go in Discord, I'm like, should I be eating rectangle pizza right now? Because mm. this is so fucking junior high. Everywhere mm. I go. Yeah, and, sanitized. And, and, sanitized is what I would call it. It does help that a lot of the people on the Discord pages, if they're not feds, are in fact in junior or middle school. So, junior high or middle school. So, that being said, one of my friends got back to me, which led to the whole song I'm working on right now, Hasbro Transformers. Um, Hmm. Because he said that he was being trashed behind his back, and now they're canceling him, and now he's being kicked out of the pool table <laughs> because he has been labeled anti-Semitic for attacking Zionists and Zionists. And I'm like, really? Ooh, tell me more. And so he, he gives me receipts, and I'm looking at this stuff, and I'm like, Wow, that, that you know, isn't it kind of an established fact at this point that the whole thing of weaponizing the phrase anti-Semitism and labeling any criticism of Zionists or war atrocities committed by Zionists as just simply anti-Semitism when in fact Arabs, Palestinians in this case, themselves are fucking semites mm-hmm. but, but anyway so is this again, what got this, us into trouble last week 
I don't know. They came after us twice, and I can't remember what they came after us for. It was when we were talking about the third rail, the the, the sacred land of Zion, mm. um, and the greater Zionist project. Uh, look out, Arab world. Oh, they already know. Um, yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. And it's been so, a long uh, week, even though it's only been six days. It's crazy. I mean, consider the fact that Yemen, which is pretty much a smoking bomb crater every day, they even had enough duct tape and finger paint to paint Palestinian flags next to their flags on their one or two operating helicopters and make custom Palestinian flag head bandanas to wear on top of their um, homemade uniforms as they stormed aboard an Israeli-owned vessel at the uh, uh, Bab Mandab Strait there at the southern end of the red sea uh, next oh. to djibouti um so they were entrepreneurs that? uh yesterday okay so even yemen Those with the their Houthis? limited yeah yeah that yeah i've heard Houthis, so much about who teased the who the yeah, hotties yeah. Houthis, the, the hotties whatever teased man because okay. they said so, they're hotties yeah sure who teases them shake djibouti again there you go <laughs> The jokes write themselves. That's right. So, uh, to find out uh, more, fuck around. That's right. It, it's real simple now. This, the, the, the issue of what is genocide, what is colonial um, projects, what, what is settler colonialism, what does it look like, what does it taste like, what does it feel like? I, I, you just flip over a couple channels. And it's being live streamed right now. Mm. And so it brings it into modern instantaneous. There's no way to memory hole or amnesia a real time live streamed fucking genocide as Israel has fucked around and found out. What are you talking about? Now their international credibility is vanishing. As more and more countries close their Israeli. What are you talking about? Of course there is. There's already a ready made solution for that. Uh, do you not know about the toil- the Taylor Swift uh concert phenomenon that has been happening over the last few years? Oh yeah. Yeah. You just you have you have government uh, funded might as well don't even bother with subsidized right just go straight to funded fully funded government funded uh taylor swift attendance and just everybody has to do it like i don't know whatever whatever the requirement is to keep the memory car compartmentalized you know there's like once every three years once every four years whatever whatever it is there you go problem solved I mean, never you know, mind I, that, you know, half of those people might accidentally short circuit and like take out an entire shopping mall, you know, whatever. You, you just gave me the perfect segue because, you know, I really, really missed getting to go to that pop concert. I, I say pop as in like pop up, like a snap concert that was planned and held in Cucuta, uh, Colombia. Mm-hmm. Which is on the border with Venezuela. Easy for uh, you next, to say. Uh, next to the uh, bridge, uh, not to be confused with Cucuba, uh, which is a delicious cucumber. <laughs> but um, you know, th- there's a four lane freeway bridge that connects Venezuela and Colombia. There, that's never been open to traffic because um, Venezuela has never completed their end of the four lane road, and so. That well, they have closed. been having some money issues lately. I don't know if you know about that or not. Well, I don't know if you remember some of the propaganda failed during the buildup to the um, Bay of Piglets invasion of uh, Venezuela. But in the buildup to the Bay of Piglets invasion, um, <laughs> uh, we had this uh, uh, Kukuta, um, uh concert uh and they kept showing on tv the one of the three bridge crossings that's never open 
because this international four-lane bridge is never connected to the freeway on the other side. So they never opened it because you would just drive off into a field. Uh, and there's no border facilities built yet because the freeway's not built yet on Caracas. So nevertheless, they keep showing this bridge over and over again on US TV saying, Venezuela has closed the border. It's like the other two bridges are open. And they've never used that bridge. And, and <clears throat> there was just one after another propaganda mm-hmm. fail in the lead up to the Bay of Piglets. I thought that was the most epic propaganda fail. And it was at the time. And then the mm-hmm. Bay of Piglets happened. And the guys got captured and the United States was like, hey, bro, plausible deniability. I don't know this motherfucker. He is some idiot from Miami Day, bro. Just some Florida man. You you can't control right. what the Florida man is Florida gonna man. do. Everybody Florida knows man Florida. said we're going to Venezuela. Florida man boys. is internationally known. You can ask him. He's yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, and so he said, you know, Aruba, Curacao, Venezuela, here we come. That's how it went down. Um, the ABC Islands. He was right there, bro. But you know, then all of a sudden. I just don't know what the fuck is going on. And and honestly, I'm going to go a little Occam's razor with this take on the IDF Hasbro fail. In that all this time talking about how they have the best, that that Mossad is the best, you know, Mossad is the best super duperest intelligence agency in the world. And they have the best. They're the A plus 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 duperest technology yep. that's ever had it they're the best out, the greatest the smartest the the super high tech everything all of it all turns the time out, yeah. uh, turns out they're full of schmutz they're fucking lying what what they're mediocre at best no mediocre at best. no are you serious yona are you saying that they're just making this up is that is that what you are insinuating? That they are fibbing? That they could oh, be he, possibly telling an untruth? Is is that what you're what you're beating around the bush about? So, meanwhile, while all this stuff is happening in uh, you know in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem around Sheikh Zarah. And in uh, Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, the United States is still illegally occupying Iraq and a huge chunk of Syria. Wait, like I thought Iraq was a sovereign nation now. The Northeast Third. Um, well, That's what Zero Hedge so. said. Uh, but breaking news, in case you missed it, yesterday afternoon, President Biden ordered an airstrike. Yep. outside of Baghdad and yep I just saw the that out of uh, about an hour American ago and occupied I, I did share it with you I think yeah um, and uh, uh, I believe uh, Iraq has even come out and said that that's a violation of their sovereignty and in international law kind of yeah. sort of right kind maybe maybe I well now but is that in a violation of our international rules-based order though that's a good question. You know, I asked, put it that asked way. the uh, they said asked, law, so uh, I think it probably depends on where the case is tried. You know, whether it's on land to, or at sea. Technically, we'll you know. definitely have to check with the blinking idiot in the room. Hmm. You you realize if he if. just goes by his first initial and his last name, he's a blinking. Yeah, how could he tell a lie? He's honest, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> That's right. He, he definitely ain't Jimi Hendrix. Ooh, that. And so he does that mean he likes boys too? Oh, no wonder why Mary Todd went crazy. Well, we're gonna have to do a whole "fuck you, Lincoln" episode, um, and and that's coming up before Christmas because on Christmas Day, eighteen sixty-two. Wait, I have to work on Christmas uh, too. Before Christmas, right. it'll be on. It'll be on the ninth day of Christmas. Um, and uh, and so in 1862, Christmas Day, he did pardon 
many of the Santee Lakota Sioux, but he still hung 68 of them in the mm-hmm. largest mass gallows uh, ever built. Uh, what were downtown, their crimes? Downtown St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. What were the they Twin executed cities. for? Uh, well, I guess kind of like what the IDF would consider to be like security offenses, because some of them threw rocks, well, tomahawk rocks. Uh, some of them were accused of stealing rocks horses. To sticks, but still um, rocks. Right. Uh, har- harassing settlers. Um, uh, dancing in a threatening manner. Seriously? Yeah. Well, the ghost dance was made illegal. What? Not long thereafter. You know, Havoka came out with the ghost dance. I mean, that's why they went after Big Meat. And so Big Meat took his band of uh, Wounded Knee Creek uh, to turn in all of their firearms to the 7th Cavalry. <laughs> and of course, as the lines formed and they're all turning in their <laughs> firearms to the Cavalry, You got two jackasses over there that are supposed to keep the blanket over the Gatling gun while they're all lined up single file right in front of the trench that they're all supposed to fall in when they pull the blanket, fire the Gatling guns. Dumbass pulled the blanket off before the last three guys in line were done giving up their guns. And that's why there was a gunfight, and that's why there were five survivors. Yeah. Not to interrupt you, but I really need to get this out because when you said that that they made the ghost dance illegal, I just had this image in my mind of Joe Biden walking out to the podium in the White House and announcing that from that moment forward, anyone in the country that dances the Charleston is now an enemy of the United States of America and will be dealt with swiftly and harshly. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't that what the movie footloose was about yes 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 that's ex- almost exactly what it was about never in my mind did i think in this thanksgiving special that i would be giving a shout out to kenny Loggins. Yeah. so i won't so i i didn't <laughs> we're not going into that danger zone no sir yeah no sir I mean that that that's as close as you can get to Rick Astley without getting Rick Roll, really. If somebody goes Kenny Loggins. Yeah, and nobody needs that in twenty twenty three. No. 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 I mean some people back. do, but no one in, in this crowd. No. So circling back to the major point there, Hasbro is Mossad produced Israeli propaganda or or to, to be the your favorite polyglot Grand Theft World linguist of record. Um, Hasbara is Hebrew for, uh, it's the verb to explain. So it, it's, it's juice plain. It's Zion's plain. Let me explain this for you, Goya, because you mm-hmm. don't understand. We are God's chosen people, so we can do but the fuck be by shut up. So that's pretty much how that goes. And it's work. And the BBC and the CNN and all the rest of the state media have just gone along. Everyone at the UN Security Council has just kind of gone along. That they, you know, but, although over time they have but, become more isolated, never more isolated than but, they are now. Yeah, but I change. saw, I saw, or I heard. I guess I should say, because uh, I don't, I didn't actually see it, but I heard a clip in the last two three days uh there was a bbc report Mm -hmm. that was actually uh fairly critical of israel and the idf and uh their tactics and motivations and what they're doing as far as propaganda um it was not your typical you know lavish praise from the bbc it was it was more um it was more critical uh so i'm not quite sure what they're trying to to pull on people 
Uh, but it's that, that it's a stunning. different tone than what you normally get from the BBC when they're talking about Israel. Which we pointed out before when Wolf Blitzer kind of had Correct. his um, come to Jesus moment on CNN and then yeah. with BBC. I believe that was even last week. And amidst that, while that was happening, the uh, uh, Assemblée Nationale in France actually passed law making it a criminal offense to criticize Israel. Oh, to did the that point pass? now that Yeah, they're like they're you fucking throw kidding people me. in jail. And so in in the midst of that, okay, pretty there much the there's your the wrong BBC, thing to legislation. The BBC precedent has been set. And in, by in, France in, of all fucking nations. You know, in the Fifth National Republic of France, uh, I believe it's, uh, yeah. So now the Republic of France. And they're has, also you know, going to be rolling out the digital surveillance grid with the Olympics next year, too. Right. So it's right. like a win-win Paris. for uh, fucking parasites. Now, imagine, if you will, their equivalent to BBC or CNN is a uh, France vacat. Right or France um, twenty four seven, France um, twenty four, France twenty four, France vingt quatre, uh, and so you know one of their uh, main um, uh, contributors on the English channel on the English uh, version because you know it's just like RT they have uh, uh, France vingt quatre Arabe France vingt quatre Anglais. Right. So you can get it in Arabic and French. They have one in Spanish. Um, but it's basically French state media, uh, France 24. And, you know, one of the main contributors on the English uh, uh, channel of, of France 24, Michael Kirtley, very close personal friend of mine from Bardstown, Kentucky. I've known him since I was about eight years old and wow. we converse regularly. His son, Tercy Kirtley, uh, which is, you know, obviously Michael's his father and uh, Tercy's mother's, uh, they, they still live in Inye, which is next to Versailles, southern part of uh, Paris in the Balmy wow. suburb. And that's one of those famous people, with. y'all. Yeah, and Tercy was actually on the Ratatouille movie, the animated Ratatouille a couple voices he, he does a lot of yeah he's he's in media stuff too so uh, they were the ones that contacted me and said yo look at what they just broadcast on france 24 and so i go and i check out the french language one and i was just on the floor and then i go to the english channel and it's the same thing in english because a lot of times they'll say things in french mm-hmm. on the french channel that they won't air in English because oh, really? you know because you do it in English, you're speaking to Americans, right? If if you do it outside of English, ah, they'll never understand. They don't speak. Um, that's kind of how it goes. Um, but uh, they were totally picking apart all of the uh, failed Hasbro, and so literally on the heels of the National Assembly, just days earlier, saying any criticism of Israel is illegal. Now the literal state media is saying nothing but criticism of Israel. So is Mm. everyone at the French state media run by La Défense now going to be arrested by? Do they arrest themselves? No, it it doesn't apply to them. See, it doesn't apply to the politicians uh, either. It only applies to... The regular people, right? Uh, I just want to make a, a note to we call them peasants listeners. normally. I mentioned La Défense. We only have um, two classes now. La Défense or La Defense is the name of the French equivalent of the Pentagon, and it's mm-hmm. at the end of the Champs Elysees on the Paris bypass, which is called. Um, Le Boulevard Périphérique and uh, just above Bois de Boulogne. 
anyways, that's the belly of the beast. You know, we have the Pentagon, uh, the Froggies, the Frenchies. They have a la defense. I'm surprised they defense. don't have the hexagon. But yeah, uh, actually, it is a hexag. It's a hexag. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks as much of like a Star of David as the Denver International Airport looks like a swastika. Okay. It's, it's, it's chilling. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it, there's all kinds of architecture to take in in Paris, um, if you must. Uh, but it's stunning. Stunning to see. And, and for me, the fact that all of these state media apparatuses are rejecting and calling out failed Mossad Hasbara. To me, indicates how bad the Hasbara is. More so than even the... Uh, granted, they are killing at a rate we've not seen since the the first Nakba in 1948. But as we know, with the occupation in uh, Palestine by the Zionists, there's been a series of Nakbas over and over and over. You know, 2002, 2014, 2018, 2021. I mean, it's just wave after wave after wave after wave of violence. And so when I try to look at what, what distinguishes this and what, what's heralded this response and everything. Because if you think back to October the 8th and October the 9th, uh, look at the polling in America. I mean, most people were still like, oh, yeah, Arabs, fucking terrorists. You know, and so the whole Mossad project of vilifying all Arabs and vilifying Islam itself as being synonymous with terrorism oh hello denver <laughs> um yeah i thought and, the uh the people might want to see that yeah um i mean and, it's and not it's not perfect right like it's missing an arm pretty much or maybe they just haven't built that part yet that that comes later this century it's got all four there they're all four there where you can see it i only see three I see one there, I see one you, there, you, and I see, see the one, one there. You're, you're not seeing the one that's going straight down to the right there. Correct. I'm I'm not seeing it. It's there. <laughs> it's there. You it's didn't perfect. get my joke. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, it went right over my head. I'm going to have to wear my yellow patch to the UN now. Yeah. Um but uh, you'll also notice on that picture that Denver is nowhere to be seen because they built that new airport, I think about 45 miles from downtown. Yeah, it's like, it's nowhere near Denver. <laughs> Literally in the middle Dulles of Dulles is closer to D.C. than that airport is to Denver. God, and Dulles is like 45-minute drive from Crystal City where the... Washington National is, or, or I'm sorry, yes. Reagan. Yes, but as the crow flies, that should only take you about 15, maybe 20 minutes. Well, if you got the easy pass transponder in your car, you can just zip down the fucking toll lanes like a rich dude gets the rest. Uh -huh. No, no, if you're a VIP, you don't have to fuck with any of that shit because you just get in the underground train and oh, that's right. you go right there. That's right. Yep. That's right. Point well, I mean, uh, if you've got money, you're not flying out of Dulles. <laughs> Fly to National. You got money. Uh, Biscotti says you should check out the artwork at the Denver airport. That'll be oh, uh, yeah. homework. That's your homework oh, assignment. Yeah. So you can. Uh, I already have. You can fact yourself. Uh, I already have. Yeah. I, I've got all kinds of downloads. No, not you, Yona. Murals. I'm talking to the audience, I'm talking uh, to the people. Right, the people in in America and all around the world, because we are, you know, we brought. Oh, I don't want to give it away. Over the planet. I'm no spoilers, no no hints from me. You got it. You just yeah. trust me. You go prepare Search it to have your mind fucking blown. You'll be like, when was this? Thing? Oh my god! They got and, you know, like Geiger to do what? 
The best thing about Denver International Airport is their baggage system. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even remember, dude. I don't. It's been so long. I don't remember. That was 1995, it took, like right it took, after it opened. I think it took them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stapleton closed in 95 when they moved out there because they, it was Denver Stapleton right there at uh, I-70 and I-76. Anyways, uh, I think it took them two and a half years to get their baggage system to work. Hmm. Yeah, all kinds of problems with that. Doesn't surprise uh, me. Yeah. Well, well, one of these days, we're going to do a Get Back Carter episode just on infrastructure fails. You know, basically Boston big digs and beyond all the <sighs> incredible that was just money, money laundering. Bits. That was straight up money laundering, is what that was. And let me tell That's you, no folks, different than what the Pentagon does every single day, but it was just in the public sector this time. There ain't no money pit imaginable as deep as building railroads. What? Oh, yeah. Ask California how expensive building a new railroad is. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, no. You're talking about the light rail system, right? That Paul Pelosi no, no, was I'm, working I'm, on? I'm talking about the 250-mile-long 50 foot tall concrete viaduct carrying a high speed rail line across flat level fields. I did say it was a 200 mile long viaduct, right? From Modesto to Merced and Bakersfield. That's what they decided to build first. They didn't want to build this first section out of San Fran first. They didn't want to build the section out of LA first. They went to the very most rural. Yeah section in the middle of fucking nowhere and then had can proceeded to build three different pergola bridges uh which if you're not if you don't know what a pergola bridge is that uh, imagine if two railroad tracks cross each other on different grades mm -hmm. but the tracks are virtually parallel to one another so right. that in order for one railroad track across the other track they're literally going to require a bridge that's like 2,000 feet long because it's such a you know they're virtually the tracks are nearly parallel to each other so instead of a traditional bridge mm -hmm. you have to build what's called a pergola bridge so basically the track that's going to be underneath basically builds retaining walls on each side for half a fucking mile and then puts little beams across the top every 30 feet. And that way they can then build a deck for the track above that's just barely crossing the other alignment hmm. by maybe a three-degree deflection. Okay. And so you need a pergola bridge to do that. Okay. And they're doing all this so that it can be super-duper high speed, and it's costing... I don't know how many millions of dollars per track mile. Well, it doesn't you know, surprise I, me. Like I said, there <coughs> was there was that one project in Northern California that Paul Pelosi was uh, a part of that ended up, they they had poured already like hundreds of millions of dollars into it and uh, they'd taken land, literally taken land from people under eminent domain yep. and all this other shit. And like five, I think it was like five years into the project, like just the whole thing falls apart and they're like, nah, fuck it. We're not going to do it anymore. But they never got any of the money back. Well, here's the thing with the California high speed rail project. And people never in, got their land no, back. It's in jeopardy if it'll ever be completed because they've just gone about it in completely the wrong fucking ways, every which way possible. But needless to say, it's been exorbitantly expensive because of all of these overpass structures they've been building. Bridges, viaducts, pergolas, and the whatnot. I just explained the pergola. Now, there is yeah, one If you need thing, a refresher, just rewind about three minutes. There is one thing that is more expensive than all that shit, though, when it comes to trains, and that is the dreaded T word tunneling trestles are one thing 
Is it one word? Tunnels get into one major, major. I mean, tunnels just take the budget, expense, and everything fucking astronaut. How high are you right now? Very high. <laughs> so, with that being said, as much of a freak out as there has been about cost overruns and exorbitant price of infrastructure with the California high speed rail, now at last, the U.S. Department of Transportation. And Biden has now signed the transportation bill. It is now law. Money is being appropriated. Contractors are already on the move. They've already broken ground. And the ball is rolling on. for the Baltimore Tunnel replacement and the Hudson River replacement at New York Penn Station. At last, the 120-year-old infrastructure on the Northeast Corridor, the rail corridor from Richmond, Virginia to Boston, Massachusetts, the single busiest rail corridor in all of the Americas, from Alaska to fucking Argentina. The and they're going to start rail. construction on it. And at last, the 40-year overdue replacement of the Penn Station tunnels and the 60-year overdue replacement of the Baltimore tunnel. It's finally going to happen. But isn't Fine. that going to uh, affect traffic along that corridor? Isn't that going to slow down, have the effect of slowing down traffic on that uh, corridor? I mean, there will be some temporary detour track to put up while they're um, doing the last part of the construction. But with both of these tunnels, because of the sharp, sharp, entrance and exit curves into both of the tunnel structures the new tunnels are in a different place because they're not going to have hairpins going in and hairpins coming out of both tunnels and they're also not going to have you know almost two percent gradients going into and mm -hmm. coming out of the tunnels as well it's going to be a more gentle slope and much more gentle curves which means that the new tunnels will be on the inside of both of the curvatures of the existing tunnels. So existing tunnels will still be in use until the new tunnels open. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they're tearing it out and putting a new tunnel in the very same place. That's well, what I'm saying. In the live stream chat, uh, Dylan says this is a third world country. And I agree with him. Right. Yeah. Like this is this is straight up like uh I remember being a little kid in government school and learning about what the United States was supposed to be and even at that time what they were teaching us wasn't actually true. That's that's neither here nor there at this point, right? Uh the United States at one time appeared much more legitimate. Uh, or I should say, I guess, the federal government of the United States, the holder of, you know, all the shares of the corporation, whatever. Uh, it appeared more legitimate at one time than it does today. Um, so and you that, know, I, that I, is why I'm going to piss off. Uh, I'm going to piss off Greta Thunberg, but Go setting the, the, the climate change aside, I understand the climate change. Is you know, she's an so adult fast now. now. Yeah. 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 Correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't climate change? The climate is changing so fast that there's literally four climates every year now. I mean, you, I grew up with four seasons. You had winter, but, but you now, had spring, but now there's, you had summer, and you had autumn. But it's different now. Spring, And is I just springier. triggered some people. Spring is springier. Winter is wintier. Fall is fallier. Summer is summerier. Mm hmm Definitely. It, it's spring like doesn't exist change. anymore in the mid-Atlantic. There is like there's no change. such thing as spring in the mid-Atlantic region anymore. But I'm just going to put all that to a side. The truth is, the United States is an energy powerhouse all across the country. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why, if the resources were managed properly, that we shouldn't still be the leader in transportation infrastructure in the world as we were a hundred years ago really up until the 1950s 
we were still an infrastructure leader. And the biggest impediment to progress in the United States to this day continues to be private railroad ownership. Nationalize the railroads, period. Interstates are owned by the people. The railroads should be owned by the people. The people pay for the railroads Uh, to be built and pay for the railroads to be maintained. I'm not an advocate of communism or socialism, but certain things should not be privately fucking owned. There's one problem with that, you know. Like prisons, like railroads. Well, but prisons are private owned too. Right. Because that's capital. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're not private owned. They're private run. Because the state actually pays for the facilities, uh, but the private corporations that staff them and and take care of the maintenance and running them and uh, cracking skulls and doing all that stuff, that's all private companies. The government owns the building. The government uses taxpayer money to build the building, and then these companies go in and they run the operation and they make a killer profit. It's a awesome business model. Well, you know, there is freedom of information act request and there is somewhat of a process to try to pry fact check me out on that from the government. But God forbid if the CIA and the NSA and the other um, alphabet agencies ever figure out how to do cut out private companies to do their bidding that don't have to answer to Congress. If they ever figure that out, boy, are we fucked. Hmm. Shout out USAID. Anyway. Yeah. Um. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> if only I could think of a good Samantha Power joke right now. Oh, Damn man. It. Put on the spot and I failed. I failed miserably. Yeah, I went to think of Samantha Powers and Victoria Newland came in over the phone because she has to interrupt every time. She's like the Amy Klobuchar of the State Department. Look out, flying paper. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, you know Yats is our guy. Yats is our guy. Yeah. No, that's Vicky. Yeah, Victoria Newland. Where's Vicky? She's, She's always around screaming here somewhere. over Samantha. She's always hanging around somewhere. Fuck the EU. See? Yep, there she is. No, you know what we need? Doesn't Uncle Sam go by Aunt Samantha now? <laughs> I don't know. We don't need to talk about that. We need an intro, right? We need something with like some cool music and some snappy uh, sound bites or something. Just like, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe 60 seconds at the longest. You know, I... All we got to do, I can just cut up a 60-second sample out of the uh, Richard Grove song I made there with um, uh, Michael Badnerick. Hmm. Uh, Edgemication is the song. There you go. That might Edgemication. Because, you know, it's got the intro with Richard. Where he drops the yeah, uh, but see, you'd have to you'd have to put you and me in there too, right? right? Like we'd have to get some clips from like stuff that we've said when we're being ridiculous or insane or whatever, right? You know, just like yeah. three quick three five six second uh, little bites that you kind of like pepper in there. Yeah, it's just a matter of editing. We'll make it happen. All right. Well, I, like happen. I said, somebody needs to do it. I think that's a great idea. I don't have time. I mean, I, I thought about doing that with my own uh, remix of the Grand Theft World theme, but that's really the, the main show theme, whereas I think Edgemication could be uh, repurposed and I could uh, yeah. rob from that yeah. easy. Yeah, like what I did for <laughs> interviews where I stole that song from uh, Phytophiliac and then I just, mm-hmm. you know, dropped some yeah. stuff in there. Made it yeah. sound really, really fancy uh, where all I was really doing was just like pasting, you know, picture together. But the, uh, the, the long Pretty and the tape. short of it is, um, I feel like at a, at a moment when so many train buffs and train enthusiasts are celebrating the announced expansion 
of Amtrak service and the announced uh, expansion of frequency of service. So they're not only talking about adding new routes back to the map, routes that we haven't seen from Amtrak since, in some cases, since 1979, because granted, the National Rail Passenger Corporation doing business as Amtrak was formed in 1971 when the private railroads just decided flat out, uh, they're not going to carry passengers anymore. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so the federal government stepped in. Otherwise, we just wouldn't have passenger rail at all. Uh, and so in that strange arrangement, now they're offering, saying that by um, yay zero 2030, we're going to have all these new Amtrak routes. And in addition to that, hmm. on these existing routes we're going to see uh, a return to much greater frequency um, like for example the train that serves virginia and west virginia kentucky ohio and indiana shout out steve pokemon my my good hoosier hillbilly redneck friend uh that's from right indiana? now yeah, yeah i didn't know that hoosier. right um that's a, that you know and they play banjo up there and and so does he <laughs> As, as any uh, self-respecting Hoosier would, um, go Bobby Knight. So, you know, the yeah, Cardinal... Shout out, shout out Mike the Polymath. He's a Hoosier. <laughs> That's right. Um, not Still not quite sure what a Hoosier is. It just means they're from Indiana. I think it's Hoosier Daddy. Sure. My dad Shout out Bobby Knight. R.I.P. That's one of those, uh, you know... Never ending questions. Who's your daddy? Who's your no, who's your daddy? Not my, my daddy's the Hoosier. But who's your daddy? My daddy's the you think you think Bobby Knight took the shots? Because mm. he died recently. I don't remember exactly yeah. what it was. Most likely natural causes because he was fairly old. But I think he would have took Yeah. Really? Because boomers are Boomers are compliant. That's like true. That. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they, yeah. I mean, when when you talk they about love boomers, them some government, they do. You you talk about boomers. You're talking about that beloved Never got demographic that, that is Never still tuned into CNN and MSNBC. I mean, if it wasn't for them, those poor channels wouldn't have any viewers at all. Yeah. Well, they were. <laughs> I think part of it is they were really like the first generation raised on television. Yeah. And that, you know, they had three channels for however many years. I don't even know how long it was, but like there was a time when all there was was just network television. There were three channels. You, some places you might get lucky and have four because there was like a local station and they got to uh, get a little bit of bandwidth. I mean, we've come so far. I mean, it, it, it began during the Spanish American war with subsidizing and, and getting ticket prices down at the theaters low enough mm. and making sure that there were enough theaters and, and enough of the small towns to get everyone into the theaters to hit them with yeah. the news reels Correct. and the news reel propaganda. And yeah. then that led to getting a radio into every home. So mm -hmm. everyone could listen to the radio for the fireside chats. Yeah. And then that was followed Shout by out television. Yep. Yeah. Good old Enzo. Yep. And uh, and then you get uh, television uh, and those, you know, I just think of that Rod Serling, you know, narrator voice in the black and white, um, all that great stuff Laurel Canyon put out, you know. <laughs> and and so it's like, you know. That was, boomers, that was from Laurel Canyon too? Shit. Boomers respond to that MS-DOS basic programming type stuff, you know, and. Meanwhile, now we're in a day and age where God. they're so out of touch. I've never seen so stark of a technological disconnect between the generations. And it's never been so profound because it so directly affects how people inform themselves and how they consume media depending upon their age yeah. demographic and whether or not they're still going to the CNN or whether they're still using Facebook. 
hi Nana, um, or you know, or you know, or if they've moved on, you know, like where, you know, like it's just things just keep getting more and more decentralized uh, in response to this mm. fascist totalitarian push to monopolize and centralize everything and get everyone onto Facebook, everyone onto Twitter. And now let's, you know, and then Nimarata Randawa is telling you, don't use an alias, Nikki Haley. Uh, you know, and right. you know, everyone will have to use their real name. No aliases from the bitch. That the dissonance is thick with that one. Alias nonstop. I mean, my God, Nikki Haley is so pro-war. Hillary Clinton put on the John Lennon glasses and told her to give peace a chance. I mean, my God. Oof. <clears throat> so I was talking about railroads, and the long and the short of it is the expense and the timeline and the cost overruns on the North River Tunnel replacement, it's the Hudson Tunnels into the Penn Station, New York City. Mm. Um, the, the upgrade of New York Penn Station, which once again was a New York City. Fuck you! <laughs> so they got their awesome Moynihan Station for the rich commuters to Long Island, but for the Penn Station that all New Yorkers use, yeah, it got passed up yet again. So it's still that lovely 1970s shithole hiding underneath MSG. That's uh, Madison Square Garden. That's true, because it's true. Um, and so New York has just gotten completely fucked. And now we're going to have probably a 20 to 30 year saga of another five years to complete the tunnel and another 20... and. And so it's going to make the California high-speed rail uh, ballooning figures right. pale by comparison. Because now we're tunneling through downtown Baltimore under historic figures on the National Historic Register and buildings. And now we're tunneling under still, the goddamn... Yeah, but is, look, it's Baltimore, right? We've all been to Baltimore. Be more, baby. We know what Baltimore is. Like, is it really going to be that hard to just, like, you know, take out a whole block in Baltimore and do whatever the fuck you want to with it? I don't think so. The problem... I mean, the the people that live in Baltimore do it. You remember back, uh, was it summer, springtime, whatever? The woman drove her car just, like, straight into the building, fuck, took out the whole damn building? But you it's, see, the it's a regular Saturday in Baltimore. The the tunnel replacement in Baltimore is going to require the the actual design elevation for the track in places to be below sea level. So it's going to have to be a watertight tunnel uh, because you know it turns out Baltimore um, has a harbor that is uh, at sea level um, at the mouth of the Patapsco <laughs> Which River. Which is fortunate. Um, so that's where you want to have a harbor. That's right. That's you're right. You're going to have right. one anywhere. You Best want to have be it at sea level. level. That's right. Ask Tibet. Ask Tibet <laughs> how that harbor is doing oh, up there. In the terrible, range. terrible investment by by the government of Tibet. That was horrible, horrible planning. Nepal was having the same problem. Luckily, the Chinese stepped in, and now they're getting a high speed rail line. Everybody's getting a high speed rail line except the United States um, because we're still stuck on private railroad ownership. And on, on a lighter note, um, CSX and Norfolk Southern, uh, two of the four remaining super monopolies, that yeah. the class one railroads. Yeah. Um, uh, I did leave out BNSF. Norfolk Southern of uh, East Palestine fame, of course. That's right. Lest uh, we forget. And so... Norfolk Southern was rolling through Atlanta in a CSX switch yard and hit oh, a CSX shit, right. train. Uh, and you sent because, me that, didn't you? Yes, I did. And because the Norfolk Southern t 
train and CSX train collided with each other on track that they share, but it was in the CSX yard. You've got Fulton County investigating and the Federal Reg- uh, Federal Railroad Agency and the uh, uh, Georgia State Railroad Agency and CSX and Norfolk Southern. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. There's going to be so many fucking lawsuits. Do you and think? I, I, just, I, I just can't wait to see it because it's not very often you get an adversarial lawsuit where two private railroads get to fight each other in court with armies of lawyers. It's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be real good. Oh, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see this Atlanta train wreck uh, in court. Oh, oh here it you is. Know, yeah, I just found it. Do you remember how long the, uh, the thing was from Fox 5? Uh, the clip that I had, I think it was about like two minutes. Was it? Do an right. You yeah. want to? You want to play? It's local. It? It's local. Yeah. Do you have it? I sent yeah. it to you. Yeah. 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 Let her rip. All right. This is what happened, folks. All right. Let's see if I can do this without crashing the stream. A town down. We in Georgia now. Two trains collided today in Atlanta. The crash caused a partial train derailment and a fire, as you see here, ignited from transported diesel fuel. Fox News' Brittany Edney is live outside CSX's train yard where this happened, Brittany. So what's the latest? Well, the most important thing is that nobody was hurt. But here's the thing, this partial train derailment, which subsequently led to a fire and also fuel spill, it has left a very big mess for crews to clean up. At CSX's Howe's Yard. A derailment and fire in the train yard. First responders say the partial train derailment involving eight train cars happened at around 6.15 Friday morning. Seven were tank cars and we had one that had some petrol oil in it and then six were empty. And a fire ignited from the one locomotive carrying about 4,000 gallons of diesel fuel. 1,200 burnt wow. gas and there's about 2,800 left. The fire was contained. Causing this giant plant of black smoke to billow up from the tracks and a diesel fuel leak. There's a mount, but it's mixed with water, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's, needs to be contained. There are a number of businesses ah. nearby, but Atlanta Fire and Rescue says no evacuations were needed and there's no danger to the community. And oh, now cool. The Everything's the good. Move on, folks. Go back <laughs> to bed, America. Nothing with to their, say here. Um, That's right. Your government uh, is in charge. To prevent any runoff and contain the area of all the hazardous runoff. Norfolk Southern and CSX each own one of the trains involved. CSX says it's working to clean both the plastic pellets and diesel fuel that spilled during the collision. Adding in a statement, quote, the derailment is contained within CSX property. CSX appreciates the swift action of local first responders. Safety is our highest priority as we work to develop a recovery plan. Officials say there's no word yet as to how this all happened, but both companies, including CSX and, of course, also Norfolk Southern, say that they are both investigating the cause. Reporting live in Atlanta, I'm Brittany Edney, Fox 5 News. Brittany, thanks so much. Thanks, Brittany. Yeah, wow. Brittany looks like a lot of fun to party with. See you on Peachtree. I, I, well, I figure that's probably why she's on camera, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's usually that, you know, people don't want to face ugly truths like that, but when it comes to things like media, yeah, that's uh, that's usually what it is. Which I will give a special shout out to uh, the one I call Blue Glasses. Uh, we all know and love her as Allison Morrow. Okay. She used to be a uh, news anchor woman of sorts. Uh, wasn't she on Fox? Yeah, she was on Fox was News. It Fox? Uh, she was on a local affiliate in Nashville and a couple other towns. But mm. uh, now she's on the Rock Bins and other places. Is she still broadcasting? Show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, she's got her own line of coffee and uh, I think Chilean wines. Oh, really? She she's got some taste, buddy. I, I was, might have to check out some of her products. Yeah. Right. 
I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, she's not a, a content creator that, that I pay attention to regularly. I think obviously and didn't even know she was still working, you know, I, but I'm yeah, not the she's world's got greatest, good coffee uh, and good wine. I'll, I'll go. Yeah. I'll patronize. You know, yeah. I'm not the world's greatest sommelier, but I, I will give it to the Chileans, the, the, you oh, know, dude. the dry, dude. The, the Pinots, the, 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 the Noir. And, you know, they've got a good Moscato. I don't know if I'd fuck with their Cabernet, but, you know, anyway. Eh, you never know. Uh, Argentina yeah. uh, does pretty good cab. Uh, they do. <sighs> See, you put me on the spot. Now I can't remember because I haven't I haven't been drinking wine well, for like a now, good number of years. Are we talking bottled wine or box wine? Though? Bottled. Oh, okay. Box wine is only for cooking, unless you live in a trailer park. Like there but are rules, I, we have rules. Uh, now I was uh, I was just in Virginia the other day. You may recall I went to the fucking dispensary mm-hmm. right there, just 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 up from Bristol Motor Speedway. Or you tried to in Bristol, Virginia, and I'm like, wait a second, my home, my native state, the old Dominion. And its voters embraced the democratic process and made recreational marijuana legal in the state three fucking years ago. What the fuck is taking so long? <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to yell in the mic. It's the Commonwealth. It's Nothing common. happens immediately in the Commonwealth. It always takes time. And so, you know, anyway, that's why they're I, I the oldest and- state in the nation. I go into the sheets, which is the the sheets are the most awesome gas stations because it's like a fast food place. It's twenty four seven. You can get burgers and fries, and milkshakes, and yeah. all kinds of shit. All the, kinds of shit. The cleanest bathrooms you've ever any seen. time of the day or night too. And right there by the by the front counter, you got you know extra little um, doohickeys for the car to charge the phone. You know with plugging into the cigarette light, all the little, little accoutrement. And then right there, boom, little boxes of, and they've got different sizes of box wine. They've even got like little Capri Sun wine things. Where it's like little, little, like, like a Capri little wine Sun. boxes. <laughs> like, 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 like all I'm the moms excited. can get together and get like a six pack of wine boxes. Yeah, and I'm like, look, I'm like, because at first I was like, ooh, maybe I'll get me an apple juice. And I pick up the thing thinking it's like a little box of apple juice. No, this is a fu- I'm like, oh my God. No, I don't want Chilean Moscato. Oh my fucking God. I, I mean, when in Virginia, you know. I mean, it was cheap. It's like $1.79 <laughs> for like, God, it, this is cheaper than yeah, fucking that's apple some cheap juice. wine, man. God damn. Actually, it. you're right. You're probably better off not drinking that. The Mad Dog would probably be better for you. Gee, cause I, you know, I haven't been to that vineyard in Chile. I mean, what what if those are Pinochet grapes? Uh, it, possible. Very possible. They, they, they could be filtering those grapes right through the broken eyeglass of Allende's fucking eyeglass that he was shot. It's there. There. But yeah, I had to give a shout out to her and, and local media. And so uh, for all you viewers and listeners out there in the wider Grand Theft world, which, uh, we call Planet Earth, um, this is what I do uh, to drizzle all week long, any time of day or night. All of a sudden, this phone starts going. Bling, 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 bling. And oh. Jesus Christ, 20 fucking messages from Yona going oh. off about Something fucking happened with trains again or yeah. something. Who knows? Half of them are just gifs. Yeah. Yeah. I gif and meme constantly. Uh-huh. It, it's the future of communication, really. Government just can't figure it out. Yona speaks in uh, rhymes, in memes, in gifs. Um, puns. Yeah. Like he's, puns. he's fluent in all of the uh, idioms. Because you have to take the English language and use it the way English speakers use it to deceive 
to euphemize, Correct. to sterilize, to anesthetize. That's what it was created precondition. for. Yeah. That's why translating from English into any other language is just a complete pain in the fucking ass. Yep. Because there's so much context and things that are left out. English is the language of pronoun and euphemism. Whereas a lot of other languages don't even use pronouns. <clears throat> I'm Spanish. Spanish uh, said kinda, we yeah, see kind of know. Because you know, in Spanish was like we see what you're doing. Portuguese, Italian, French, Romance, all these other Latin languages. We see what you're doing with your pronouns. And you know what? Fuck your pronouns. We aren't using them at all. Chicate. Yeah. And and yet that that that's what you hear. The, the number one mistake of an American going to speak Spanish. Yo Quiero. Yo Pablo. <laughs> yo soy. What do you do with the pronouns, man? No one uses pronouns except fucking gringos. <laughs> I'm gonna quit bitching. It's true. About it is true, though. I can I can verify <laughs> after spending almost two years in Mexico. They don't fucking use pronouns, man. They could give a shit. They just take the verb you either part. You figure it's it in out, the verb. or you just don't. Yeah, it is. It's in the. It's yes. It's in the. It's verb. in the form if, of the verb. If, if I you say, say estoy, there is no need for me to say yo. If you say estamos, I know you're talking about me and you, buddy. Correct. Let, let's get into some plural pronouns. What do you say? <laughs> oh, yeah. A, plurib a, a pluribus conjugatus. You know what I'm saying? Dude, it took me the longest time to figure out that nosotros also, it, it's we and us. Uh, and then, of course, most of the time, they never even say nosotros. They'll just say nos. Yes. And vosotros becomes vos. And then if you're one of the really weird fucking people, you use the medieval fucking singular version of vosotros, which is vos. Vos estáis. Which, uh... It sounds German. A, a, it, it's a very archaic conjugation of the verb for the formal first person you that no one uses is that like the again. royal we yeah there's also a royal we yeah there is there is there there's the informal we and the formal we it's kind of like your personal position and your private your public position and your private position whether you're hillary or you know robert f kennedy jr you know Totally against qualified immunity for killer cops. Three days later on the country club in Charleston, South Carolina. Did I say that? Yeah, we're trying to get yeah. that off the website. Out loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I totally back the boys in blue. Fuck those people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, uh, dude, if you're a Kennedy and you got Kennedy bankroll, mm. you need good security. So, you know, you got to make sure the walls are high enough. You got to make sure the guards are keeping the gates closed. Are you so, talking I'm about Bobby? Wobbly Bobby Kennedy? Yeah. yeah. He, he, he okay. can relate to poor people when he reads about it. Yeah. Yeah. He was, um, he, uh, oh, that's right. He was a heroin addict. That's what he did when he was younger. Kind of, kind of like, uh, Joe's son. A little bit, but just uh, different. Because they were both Democrats at the time, right? D does that make Bobby Kennedy the John Frusciante of presidential candidates in this year's pool? Because I don't know if... Mm -mm. Uh... Could be. But he's not like the cool new John... Like He's not like the... Scar tissue back with the red hot chili peppies. Uh, hmm. John Frusciante. This is like the 
estranged, <laughs> masturbating alone in a closet while Dave Navarro is playing guitar with the Chili Peppers. Junkie, Could be. Junkie. Could be. <clears throat> I don't know how we okay, got. He from- did uh, his his first wife died under um, circumstances that seem a bit odd. Yeah, but that's why Joe Scarbo can relate. You know, <laughs> RFK, because you know, shit happens. That's right. Some of the help dies. That's what they I have don't cleaners know. for, right? Joe Scarborough knows all about that. Joe Scarborough, by the way, married to the daughter uh, of the man who wrote "Between Two Ages," the Technotronic era. You know him as Biggie. It's a big yeah. new. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Joe Scarborough uh, can kill a prostitute in his office in the Capitol building, allegedly, uh, and and just have the you know have it just disappear, like it just goes away, and then he ends up married to child of one of the advisors to you know Rockefeller, Sassoon, Rothschild, and you know. You once again led me to the perfect segue. And he's there, he, a, wait, no, he's not an he's Canadian, I think. There's a Wampanoag term for what Joe Scarborough. I'd hate to think he's an American. There, there is actually a Wampanoag term that that would be the the tribe that uh, Squanto belonged to. Who? Uh, oh, that's right. Was, we got to get to that before the yeah, show's over. And 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 this is my Good segue. Out. So the. Uh, the uh, Wampanoag term for what happened to Joe Scarborough's um, DC whore is called a Chappaquiddick. Um, ask uh, <laughs> Edward Kennedy. Um, anyways, uh, shout Search out Cape up. Cod. <laughs> Jeez. I want to get that going. <laughs> Hashtag search it up. You know, they, uh, they were going to do a... a, a who was it? Uh, was it A and E was going to do t-shirt? Uh, we need t-shirts. A, re- a recreation of Plymouth Plantation with Alec Baldwin, but they couldn't get him to part with his property. Right. So, without further ado, I guess we're going to jump into the topic of the day. That's why this is episode six, five, four. We we had, we did five the other day. Twenty three. The, yeah, this is six now, I think. You sure? Shout out, shout out to the five. new prisoners. The, I think it's no, five. No, this is definitely, this is six. I know six. Is it six? Prisoners. Did we do yep. a five already? Anybody yeah, on the, the live stream know? I can go and look it up. but I remember the last anyway, time. Anyway, go I, ahead. I go said, ahead. Just go ahead. Because I said five with a question. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so we're going to go on to uh, I'll search it up. episode six. You're welcome. For taking uh, the the you know the main event, and so Thanksgiving, as I began to explain the the spiritual context from Indian country, now we're going to get into the other side of the coin, and that is the arrival of the Mayflower. Oh my God, you're right. It is six. Go ahead. So, for most Americans in the American history that they're indoctrinated into the mythology of the founding of America. You're often taught, you, they just kind of gloss over real quick the arrival of the Mayflower. You may get into the actual written account by the leader of the group, William Blad- Bradford, who, who meticulously wrote all this down and was published as of Plymouth Plantation. Uh, it's a great historical account of the initial a colonization of Massachusetts and the Bay Colony there. Now, we're also then introduced to the other party led by John Rolfe and John Smith who ventured into the Chesapeake Bay and founded Jamestown and the colony of Virginia. Now, in reality, we're talking about two different British parties. The Bristol Company and the London Company. Uh, And they are the ones that mounted the funds for the ships to make the transatlantic voyage 
And the reason why these two colonies of the Bristol Company and the London Company, respectively, London Company sent the Chesapeake Party and the Bristol Company sent the Massachusetts Bay Party, uh, as I recall. I'm, I'm not checking Wikipedia right now. I'm just ripping it off the top of my head. Mm. Anyhow, uh, the reason why these two colonies succeeded is because the Chesapeake Party, led by John Smith, was able to communicate with the Palatins because the Palatin chief, Wehun Sanaka, his younger brother, Opechancano, had been taken captive by Spaniards, slavers previously. Uh, slavers were European ships that would come over laden with chains and would land on the shore and then capture as many wild Indians as they could, put them in chains and take them back to Europe as slaves. And when so many died, uh, they began to just haul slaves from Africa across to the Caribbean. Uh, but initially, uh, when Columbus came on his four different voyages, including the first voyage with the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, those were slave ships with chains in the below decks. Uh, and he did pack his ships with slaves and take them back to Europe, and they all died. Same thing happened when Pocahontas was taken back to Europe. She got sick and died uh, from exposure to European illnesses with no immune system for that. Uh, and as a result, on the second, third, and fourth fifth voyages of Columbus, he packed the ships with Africans on the way back to the Caribbean. And still to this day, the Caribbean is filled with African descendants mm -hmm. of Columbus's slaves, and they still speak Spanish. Anyways, um, I'm getting off track here. Let's go back up north to Massachusetts and Virginia and these two colonies. So, Opechancano, having been captured by the Spanish, knew Spanish, and Spanish was the maritime language of the day. You know, this is before the defeat of the Spanish Armada. So, or well, just after the defeat of the Spanish Armada, but. Nonetheless, you know, Spain was the king of the seas and had been for over 200 years. So um, the British sailors knew enough Spanish to be able to converse through Opechancano. Uh, and Opechancano could then translate from Spanish to Palatine. And that's what allowed their colony to survive. And the same thing happened with the Mayflower with Squanto and uh it's interesting to me that this is never pointed out. Um, Squanto was, in fact, captured uh, by a Spanish slaver ship himself hmm. and was taken to Cadiz, Spain, uh, where he was the property of a monk sold as a slave. Uh, and uh, the monk actually uh, educated him and eventually baptized him and and gave him his freedom uh and all he wanted to do was get back home uh and so and the spain the spanish were no longer going that far north uh and in fact after the uh numerous failures the spanish were really only going around saint augustine and point south of the caribbean and nonetheless squanto did manage to make it back across the sea but it was in florida it wasn't close enough so that led Squanto to uh, learn that the uh, British were sailing uh, uh, the upper coast. And so he then went to London and finally managed to get aboard a British ship uh, and then managed to sail back across the sea a second time, this time landing uh near um uh, let me think here what's it called there oh it's the big island in uh, rhode island where they have the jazz festival every year it's on the tip of my tongue uh, newport newport yeah. newport rhode island <clears throat> is where squanto finally makes it on the dry land in new england once again and then has to make the arduous journey back to his hometown of Patuxent, named for the Big Rock. Uh, and, of course... In Maryland. 
uh, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Patuxent. Patuxent. Uh, and when he gets back to his village of Patuxent, he finds that the entire place has been abandoned. It's, and he sees where ships have landed. And obviously, the entire town was ransacked and taken hostage aboard slave ships back to lives of bondage. <clears throat> no one was left uh, other than sick that uh, were too sick to be taken. So he buries the sick and old that were left behind that had since died. Uh, and within about a week of making it back to his town, realizing he's pretty much the only survivor left of his entire town, the Mayflower arrives. And they see the Patuxent Rock and rename Patuxent Rock Plymouth Rock. And they then name the colony Plymouth. Uh, and so the story begins where most people will be more familiar with William Bradford leading the Brownists, the buckle hat Puritans off the Mayflower ship. And, you know, and so uh, <sighs> at that point, Squanto astonishes the landing party by conversing with them in English. So, hmm. of, of the, just imagine the incredible dumb luck that this party of Britons sailed across the entire Atlantic Ocean and just managed to land their ship within sight distance of the only American native Indian all of America that was fluent in English. Right, and thanks right, to right, that, right, he hold was up, able, hold up, hold it up, was hold successful. Up, hold up, hold up. So, you just laid out a very curious proposition. What the odds against that happening have to be astronomical. So, how much veracity do you think there is to that part of the story? Well, it, to me, considering that all the other uh, attempted colonizations by Scots, by Britons, because, you know, Scotland tried to colonize the Honduran coast down there below the Mosquito Isles. Um, there. Uh, Spain, France, you know, the Huguenots. Uh, mm -hmm. There were countless attempts at settler colonialism in North America, including the, the initial British attempt at colonization at Roanoke Island in right. North Carolina. Correct. Um, you know, colonization efforts in North America were characterized as failure upon failure upon failure upon failure and so yeah. when we teach the history we yeah, only see good 20 almost 30 years of failure uh you know when we're taught the history as school kids we're taught the only two success stories right out of dozens and dozens and dozens of yeah. failures and yeah. what distinguishes these two success stories from all the others that failed. The same with the conquering of Mexico. The same with the conquering of the Incas. Was that the conqueror in charge was able to immediately surmount the language barrier with translators on the spot? And so I would say that the Mayflower pulling up and discovering Squanto, yeah. the only guy on the coast that speaks fluent English, to be a one-off. But it's not, because you see the same thing repeated with La Malinche and with Aguilar and yeah, with that's a good um, point. Opechon Cano. And, and, and again, every successful conquest in South America, Central America, and North America, the key component was that they were able to communicate 
to the enemy directly in their language. And thus then conquer that enemy. Yeah. When they could not overcome the language barrier of the enemy, their colonies failed. Period. It's and an yet, interesting perspective. And yet, how many people today in the United States of America have heard of Squanto and the and the pilgrims and, and, and the whole mythology surrounding this fictional first Thanksgiving meal? How many of those know the name of Squanto and yet have no fucking idea that he spoke English? I mean, when you realize that Squanto spoke fluent English, English, then it kind of makes sense why Squanto is always doing the talking for the pilgrims. Right. When King Philip and Meta Comet and all the other sachems of the Wampanoag show up, talk, you know, Squanto's the one that's always doing the talking for them. Why is that? Well, Izzy speaks Wampanoag, mm -hmm. but how would he be speaking for the pilgrims unless he speaks English? Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. And I'm and, pretty and sure me, it wasn't a case where, you know, he was just like incredibly gifted and again, just so happened to be perfectly placed that he picked up English within a couple of weeks and, you know. He was just, it's just, he was going back and forth doing his thing. It's just, uh, it's just stunning to me that it's never pointed out that Squanto spoke English fluently mm -hmm. when they walked up and he said, well, hello. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, that, that had to be a, yeah, that, that was a shock. Uh, and I'm sure it was you a don't shock. Think he said, what up homies? When when uh, when John Smith and the party first encountered the Powhatans, oh, the legendary and, John Smith, and Opechancanough says, uh, uh, "Buenos dias." Oh well, obviously the Spanish have been here. Obviously, we're on the heels of the Spanish. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and because of Opechancanough. John Smith was able to begin his dictionary of Powhatan terms with Opechan Kano's niece, Matoaka, a.k.a. Pocahontas. Um, and so the most interesting thing of all is the fact that, of course, John Smith was then sent to explore the rest of the coastline. And John Smith would actually go on to sail up to Massachusetts Bay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and John Smith actually mapped out and discovered for the English speaking world much of the New England coastline and mapped it out for the first time, all the way up to um, like around Halifax, Nova mm -hmm. Scotia, Canada parts, um, and then on up into Newfoundland. Um, Vikings already knew about it though. Um, and in the meantime, Pocahontas, aka Matoka, she was actually then married off to John Rolfe. Right. The uh, the Lord Chancellor of the Virginia Company. At that Something time. I'm like not that. sure what Yeah, he what was he was high up archaic in the Virginia title. Company. Um but yeah. anyway, so she's married to John Rolfe and she's baptized and given the Christian name of um Rebecca uh and has children. Uh, and then finally he takes John Rolfe, uh, he takes his wife and kids to London, uh, to stay to friends there at Fleet Street and, and to regale the town with this Indian guest, uh, which is quite the sensation. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, because at the same time on Fleet Street, two, I'm sorry, three doors Probably down. Probably got an audience with the king. From, yeah, it, she uh they both did uh, yep. because squanto uh, we got, uh we got five minutes to the top of the hour by the way so squanto was in the home three doors down from where pocahontas was staying and they were staying three doors down from one another 
we've confirmed now in London the historical record in London on Fleet Street. Wow. Four, separated by three doors on the same side of the same street in London for four days. And so I cannot confirm absolutely that they had a conversation, but I do know that they were both paraded at least twice in that four-day period at very public gala events, as was the case back then, to parade around Native Indians and to get them to put on all your feathers and do an Indian dance for us. Yeah. That, it that, was the uh, custom at the time. That sensation would persist in Europe all the way, really up until the 1930s with the Buffalo Wild, Wild Bill, Wild Buffalo Bill show. Um, India, Indian show is what they were called. Indian shows. So anyhow, I can't say for certain that Squanto and Pocahontas, in fact, had a conversation with each other in English. But I can say, because I don't want to wildly speculate and say something that I can't say that I know happened, but it's safe to say that it's, it's to use the British term, it's highly likely, <laughs> considering that they're literally the two most famous Native Americans, arguably from North America in the colonial period that ever lived. Yeah. They were both the two top build stars of the engine shows those two nights. So how could they not have met? And how could they not have spoken? And so the ironic thing is, Pocahontas and Squanto did in fact meet. I can say that. I don't know if they actually spoke to each other, but how could they not have spoken to each other? And the only way they would have been able to speak to each other and understand each other was for Rebecca Rolfe to speak in English and for Tisquantum Patuxen to speak in English. Hmm. And so Squanto and Pocahontas, it's safe to say, not only met, but spoke to one another in English. That's just mind-boggling to me mm -hmm. that facts like that are never even... I, I, you probably just think I'm making this shit up, but as as you've seen yeah. throughout the night, <clears throat> I keep dropping facts. Yeah. Ivan Browning, 1990. Up, look, yeah. look it up. Look, look it, it up. Search it Fact up. Fact check the Yoda. <laughs> Don't look it up. Search it up. That's, we're going to make t-shirts. We're going to have get up. fact harder t-shirts that say hashtag search it up. That's right. Figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. We can do figure it out on front. Hashtag search, search it up. up on the back. So there you go. That was my Thanksgiving thing. Now, of course, the first official Thanksgiving was declared by Connecticut Governor John Winthrop and was it oh, 17, that bastard. Uh, 1634. Uh, thanking God uh, for uh, vanquishing our devilish enemies and clearing this land for our uh, settlement. Um, uh, because Miles Standish had burned the Pequot uh, village at the River Mystic to the ground and made an engraving of it where they were driving swords through the bellies of pregnant women as they were trying to escape through the only oh, safe passage nice. they were allowed. It's kind of like yeah. a, a 17th century version of the evacuation of northern Gaza to southern Gaza. Okay, yeah. I got got that image uh, but, in my head. But with cranberries and dressing. Okay. All right, we got about 60 Happy seconds Happy Thanksgiving, left. everybody. Yes. And there it is. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We've come full circle. I finally uh, made it to Miles Standish's silver engraving of the massacre at the Pequot Village. And enjoy your turkey. There you go. We and you uh, let that be a welcome to the folks <laughs> watching us on Brighteon this week. Shout out to all our friends. Uh, Mike Adams, the Health Rangers, Stu Peters, all you beautiful people over Friday. On. Love you guys. Oh, uh, that won't be a problem Wait, at some point gee. in the future, I'm sure. Wait, just, just, uh, I think. 
I should Blessing. check. You save know, I haven't, I haven't seen any. Uh, maybe I should save this for the after show. Yeah, I'll save it for the after show. Yeah, folks will just have to uh, wonder what it is. That's all you get, YouTube. About. Sorry, you're cut off, YouTube. That's all you get. That's right. Uh, but we'll be back next week, folks. And uh, as the Yona says, get fact up, stay fact up. Be the fact.